Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Hello everyone. Just a reminder, the stream will soon start. The countdown timer is about to come on. If you're watching this as a rerun, go ahead and skip ahead about six minutes to the top of the show or go to about minute 14 and things will really get rolling then. As usual, we'll put the countdown timer on and I'll have a hot mic while that's happening. In addition to the hot mic, I'll have a hot take about uh, the COPA stuff. I know everyone's sick of COPA, but there's some potential good news. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. Get some audio jams going. Wow. Counting things down. And I push some buttons behind the scenes. Let's see here. My Discord's open. If anyone wants to jump on there, you can play along. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Put that in the chat. going to be a good show. This would be the show to share because I'm going to give you a hot take. Welcome to All Things YouTube. Your host, Matt Haas, will be here soon. While you're waiting, here are four things you can do. One, get to know others in the chat room. Make friends. Don't be shy. Only awesome people like yourself are allowed in here. Two, share this show. Hey, your friends also need to up their YouTube game. 3. Like and join this show's Facebook page and group. They're both great resources. Finally, slap a big ol' like on this video. That really helps. Matt will be here soon. Alright, alright. Who's ready for an awesome show? Susan Wojcicki did her year-end summary to the community. Don't worry, I read it all, so you don't have to. I'll tell you what's important, as always.
can hear you. You do. Thanks for jumping on. Join me. Or, not join me. Discord. Hi, folks. I'm talking to someone on Discord. You can't hear them, but I can. Just some behind-the-scenes stuff to make the show better for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. All right. Hope everyone's doing good. Show's almost ready to kick off. I'm excited. I have news to share. I love when there's good news. Who doesn't love good news? I love good news. Well, there's going to be some. All right. I've waited long enough. The go live jam is going to happen. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another All Things YouTube. You know me. I'm Matt Haas. This is a show where I break down everything that's happening at YouTube and tell you in plain English and show you what you need to do to be awesome on the YouTubes. I'm so happy to have everyone here. This is going to be an awesome show. This is the show you want to share around because I have a hot take, a hot take on the Copa thing, and it's somewhat good news. So I think you'll really like it. Let's see who's in the house. We have uh, Billy Burtz here on the live stream. Looks like you have a new channel logo. I'll have to check that out. It looks really good, tiny. <laughs> uh, Brenda G's Designs here. Dave Gatton just showed up. Driveway Workshop with Jim Bashirs, Harney on Media, Jim Dockrell, Mark Lindsay CNC, and a few more are piling in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. This is All Things YouTube. I've got a few platform updates, and we're going to look at Susan Wojcicki's, she's the CEO of YouTube, her yearly, end of year, I should say, address to the community. She publishes about four statements a year and tells everyone in the world what's going on at YouTube, what their plans are, what their goals are, what their challenges were, and um, I read it all. And there's quite a lot to it, <laughs> but I read it all, and I'll, I'll tell you what you need to know. Is there a safe room in here, says <laughs> Mark Lindsay. <laughs> nope, this is the real world. There's no safe spaces. <sighs> Bob Lee's Woodshop and Other Things is here. Hello, hello. Welcome back to All Things YouTube. What else is going on? Hey, I got some good stuff to share. You know about the Facebook page and group? Go ahead and like the page and join the group. In the group, you can get support for YouTube 24-7, either through myself or some other awesome people that are there. If you have any questions, you can share stuff, make new friends. It's a great free way to... Uh, Join the community about being awesome on YouTube. Just search All Things YouTube group on Facebook and you'll find it. And hit join. Free for you to do. I um, have a few people that give me monetary support through Patreon. I have a Patreon page under my other branded channel, Awesome Wood Things. Yes, the Awesome Wood Things Patreon page does support All Things YouTube and my woodworking channel. There you go if you want to partake. Everyone that does gets a visual and shout out on all my live streams and on my email newsletters. You get your logo, channel name, and a link to your channel on every newsletter that comes out. Top patrons, Jerry Brown from PollyWantsACrafter.com, Portal Woodworks, Osprey Mama, thank you for being my top patrons. 
Um, driveway Workshop with Jim Bashirs is a $3 patron. Thank you, Jim. And Harneal Media is $2 a month. Thank you so much for that. Every little bit helps. You know, a thousand views is $1 for, you know, for, uh, for creators. So if you think, oh, I don't want to just give Matt a dollar. Well, you know, that's, that's substantial and very much appreciated. These are $1 patrons down here. We have Shane's Hobby Shop, Miter Mike's Wood Shop, Anna B. Workshop, OJ Woodworking Crafts, Javi's Wood Shop. And Javi was just on a live stream on Mr. Dave Gatton's live stream. He showed his Colossus CNC machine. It's huge. He has it bolted to the wall and it comes out vertical or, and, and horizontal. It's crazy. Uh, Marcel's Workshop, JP Woodwork, The Mad Maker, and Mr. Mike Laffey from Maybe I've Said Too Much.com. That's a podcast and it's amazing. Special thanks to Makers Media Network. I'm a proud member of Makers Media Network. Find out more at makersmedianetwork.com. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> I have zero sponsors on all of my many, many YouTube channels. Um, Whatever I say, I say because I want to. And what do we got? Mind equals blown. Hey, that's what I do on Thursdays. Come check it out. Now, this Thursday is Thanksgiving in the United States. There will not be a show this week. But do check back next week. And uh, if you want, I'll drop a link here in the chat. You can uh, go subscribe to Miss Brenda Lee. Br 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 <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Brenda G. <laughs> and um, go over there, Brenda G's Designs, and have all kinds of fun. Subscribe, ring the bell, and then you'll be all set for when we come back on the 5th. Thursday the 5th is when we'll be doing that. 7 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. Mind equals blown. And it's blowing up, too. It's blowing up. We're having a lot of fun with that show. People are tuning in because... When Brenda and I get going, you never know where the conversation's going to go. <laughs> so people tune in to laugh. They tune in to see the train wreck. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Ay, 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 ay. Couple days. I will have been on YouTube for five years. Black Friday is my five-year anniversary for this channel on, on YouTube. So I'm pretty thrilled about that. Totally digging it. Five years. That's a long time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got some giggling in my ear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Frankie CNC and Woodworking Channel showed up. Hello, Frankie. Welcome to the show. All right. What's going to happen is I'm going to go over a few platform changes. I'm going to break down Susan Wojcicki's um, address to the community, yearly update address to the community. Uh, but before that, kind of near the top of the show, I'm going to give you my hot take, good news about COPA. I know you're sick of hearing about COPA, but there's some good news. And the good news comes with money. <laughs> Who likes money? <laughs> oh, my. All right, let's uh, get a uh, going. What's different on the YouTubes? Uh, not very much, thankfully, but uh, we'll switch over here. The, um, the issues card, which is absent now, it's usually right here underneath the uh, analytics card. It tells you what's wrong with the platform. Well, YouTube has... <laughs> I always forget to turn that off. YouTube has um, updated all of the different departments across YouTube and across the world. And now more departments are going to put information on the card that would show up here, but it's not there now. It's called a uh, known issues card when there's a bug that they know about and isn't fixed yet, they put there. Um, so if, if anything seems wonky on the interface, it doesn't seem right, check check here first check there before you start uh you know wasting your time checking other places I'm trying to save you time your time is valuable I'm trying to save it 
money. So they will pay me $42,500, says Dave Gatton. <laughs> not quite. Not quite. Um, the copyright tool somehow got better. When you have a manual copyright, they have to say where the offending content is and you can clip it out. So apparently you've got some editing tools to, if you want to remove the potentially infringing copyrighted item, that's now easier to do. Oh, I see uh, Palladian scientists, UFO builders in the house. Hey, I saw the subscribe come through. Thank you for that. You're on my, uh, you're on my uh, subscribers area. See, look at this, recent subscribers. Ding, 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 ding. You take the first spot. How about that? Bloop. Pretty fun, eh? All right. Yeah, live subscriber count. That'll roll up one if you're not pushing the red button on my channel. That'll, that'll bloop, bloop. Roll up one at live, real time. Channel memberships are now in nine additional countries. Doesn't mean squat to anyone that has 30,000 or fewer <laughs> subscribers, but it's making the platform better, so that's good. And the yellow icon classifier is getting more accurate. Every time they slap you with the yellow icon and you know that it's not supposed to be yellow and you contest it, you put in the counterclaim and then it goes green. Well, everything about that transaction gets sucked up into the database and they analyze it and it, it makes it makes YouTube better each time. And now the team has been saying, wow, it's really gotten a lot better because um, they know how often counterclaims come in and the number of counterclaims have presumably been lessened. There's fewer of them, meaning they're getting better at accurately classifying things that need to be yellow versus green. Mm. All right. Who's ready for my hot take? Who wants to know about money? Who wants to know about the FTC and the government? All right, here's my hot take. And I haven't really heard much of this on the interwebs, but you know me, I'm I'm uh I follow all this stuff. I mean, the news about technology companies is entertainment for me. You know, I, I, I follow all the articles, I listen to all the podcasts, and um, it's just, um, it's fun for me to get in the mind of the business side of some of these tech companies, and then the policies that they try and enact. I know that sounds boring, but when I was on, I was an elected school board member here in my town, and I was on the policy committee for all six years that I was on the board. And the policy committee is, is known as the most boring committee, least glamorous and uh, hardest brain power sucking. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Again. Anyway, here's the deal. Okay, let me set this up. COPA will be good for you if you don't have a child-directed YouTube channel. So if your stuff isn't child-directed, I'm talking to you. And if your stuff is sort of mixed, where it's, you know, young adults, not child-directed, but, you know, it is a broad appeal, I'm still talking to you. If you have child-directed content, and I know the guidelines are vague, but if you do, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the rest of us, <laughs> the festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> the restraining order expired. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. What can I say? I, I like to, I, I took that office because I'm not one to complain unless it's to the person or group that can actually do something about it. So I wanted some things to change. So I ran for office and I changed it. Did a lot of good too, lasting good. Got laptops for all the kids that they, that they use throughout their career. Got them all hooked into the Google, Doc, Google Docs too. 
amazing. Made learning a lot easier for a lot of kids. Get some set up to, for the future too, instead of writing on paper and learning cursive. <laughs> anyway, that's just my my take. So what's my take? So here's here's how this is going to help. Now put yourself in the mind of an advertiser that's putting money into YouTube and putting ads on your video. Okay, pretend you're that advertiser. Look at advertising in the past and look at it to the present and calculate it into the future. Ad spends online are going up. People are pumping more money into online ads than they are traditional media like radio and television. So the spend is on the way. More money is being pumped into YouTube year after year, okay? More, more money year two than it was in year one. That's going to continue. People are not going to spend less advertising dollars on YouTube in the future. My opinion is, just like the last 10 years have shown, it's going up, up and up and up. So more money's being pumped in. If less advertising is going to kid stuff, that means more advertising is going to non-kid stuff. So in theory, there's more advertising dollars to be allotted to everyone that isn't child directed. So not only is there more dollars, not only is there gonna be more total dollars spent next year, the pool of eligible channels is going to be less. So in, it's gonna be like a doubler. Do you, do you play video games? It's like a coin doubler. <laughs> you know? So fewer, yes, I'm that guy. Did I say less than fewer? Yes, yes. Art for the Errors with Diana is here. Yep, she says Seinfeld Festivus. <laughs> Did you see on December 23rd, 2016, the Google search results had this gray line down the left-hand side of the Google search results? And most people didn't realize what it was. And it was about six pixels wide, it was just this gray line, and it was kind of like a little bit dark on one on, on one column and a little bit lighter on the one column. And if you scrolled the whole way down, it was a Festivus poll. <laughs> Google.com put an icon on the left-hand side of the search results that was this poll, and you only saw the top of it unless you scrolled down, then you saw the two wood slats like this with the, with the aluminum pole. I love Google. So that's the hot take. The hot take is there's going to be more advertising dollars next year, and there's going to be fewer channels that are going to get those advertising dollars because when you advertise, 99 times out of 100, you choose the box where you want it targeted. You want to be able to tell YouTube where to put your stuff because if you're you know, selling candles, you don't want to put it on power tools uh, videos, for example. You want to target into your market. So, um, who knows? Maybe everyone's going to start making more AdSense dollars. It, it could happen. It could happen. Palladian scientist UFO builder says, I've been trying to get my channel monetized, but it's hard to get watch time hours. Not enough people watching my videos. Yeah, well, that's that's how it goes. Strong's Adventures is here. Hi, Strong's Adventures. Welcome to the channel. I'm breaking down the YouTube news of the week. Old videos in the future, Jim Dockrell says, will be. I'm afraid to read this. I got out of my Lisa bed went to the bathroom and used my Dollar Shave Club razor while listening to audiobooks. <laughs> I love that comment, Jim. Do you know why I love that comment? He, For those that uh, 
he basically said all of the advertising, like when people sponsor and the host mentions a product in the video as part of the show, um, all those were part of like people that typically sponsor that way. Um, it, it brings up a good topic because if your main source of income is AdSense dollars, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. I mean, you can give out affiliate codes. You can uh, get crowdfunding. You can get sponsors. I mean, there's a lot of other... When you're a YouTuber, the name of the game is multiple income streams. So um, the, the best way to look at it is ad dollars are just the cream of the crop. You know, just a nice to have and just, you know not to be counted on that's the real way to play it's all about promotion says mark Lindsay. promotion 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 when i post a video everybody on my social media to include every group that i'm in that won't kick me out knows it yeah mark's mark's a marketing machine really in, in my opinion life life in general all aspects of your life it's about 80% marketing. Unless you're a lone wolf and do everything yourself, you got to get other people to do stuff, to get behind you, to agree, to make a revolution. <laughs> marketing. Marketing is about reaching lots of people with your ideas and uh, your product and um, what you got going on. All right. Let's uh let's look at Susan's Susan's letter. Oh yeah, Mark says and one affiliate link in every video. Yes. He's yelled at me before because I forgot to put my Amazon affiliate link. Yeah, if you go over here to awesomewoodthings.com slash support or anywhere on awesomewoodthings.com, you'll see my shop Amazon. Click that. Same price for you. I'll get a few pennies. You can also support me through Patreon, subscribe star. You can buy a shirt from me, drop me some PayPal cash, or send me physical stuff in the mail. You know, mail, like with the postman or the postal carrier. Hey, what's happening with Matt Haas? If you're a woodworker and you're in America, come join this group. Do a search on Facebook for American Woodworkers. And um, you can jump in. We're almost at 100 members. It's only been around for about a week. Jump on it. It's blowing up. And anyone can join as long as they love America. And they're a woodworker. Woodworker's a must. But uh, that's a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> just just some fun. I was on uh, Dave Gatton's. Uh, I was uh, watching Dave Gatton's live stream. He has a daily 9 a.m. Eastern he calls them coffee sessions, just talks, no topic. And uh, another person watching said, don't mention Awesome Wood Things new Facebook group, American Woodworkers. And and Dave says, uh, oh, I am not going to mention the American Woodworkers YouTube group or, or a Facebook group. I'm not going to mention that at all. I'm not going to mention that it's a public group and i'm not going to mention it's really easy to join and i'm not going to mention if you join you'll be surrounded by awesome people like he was he said that on stream <laughs> thank you mr dave gatton for all of your not mentioning it <laughs> and he really helped and uh no press is bad press hey look who's here it's corkboard tv welcome to the show it says hey matt how's everything Everything's great. I'm about to um, talk about Susan Wojcicki's address to the community and tell you what you need to know because I read the whole thing and it's a long statement. Who has time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, Palladian scientist has to go. Take care. All right. Let's look at her letter. Here's her letter. Um... My final letter in 2019, updates for the year. Okay. Well, what is she saying here? Let me, let me break, let me give you the cliff notes. All right. 
right, she says, uh, essentially she repeats what the goals of YouTube are, which is creator success, they're gonna tell us what's going on more, and they're gonna try they're going to try and live up to their responsibility. So that's the three pillars of what they think YouTube is all about. And since they're YouTube, that's what it's all about. Hey, Dave Hart's here. Says, hey Matt, did you like the snow yesterday? Nope, didn't hit Pennsylvania. Must have burned up before it got here. All right, this is an interesting snip, snippet here. Look at this. Um, she says that uh, people with a million plus subscribers have grown 65% based on what it was last year. And people earning five or six figures yearly has grown 40%. So this is just showing the growth of YouTube. I thought that was an interesting uh, snippet there. Be and, you know, that also speaks to, you know, my stuff isn't getting seen by as much people. Well, there's more people <laughs> and there's more successful people. That's what I'm, I'm like. You can't stand still. You can't stand still on, on YouTube. you you got to push, push, push. Supporting creator success. Okay, this was the first pillar of her Got me in Lancaster, says Dave. Well, I must have missed it. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Dave's talking about the snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, Artful Years with Diana says uh, she gets a lot of watch time through live streams. Yep. No wrong way to do it. All right, let's talk about copyright. Oh, just gets my blood boiling talking about copyright. But that's what she's talking about up here. And she does talk about the editing tools that they've put in place. I mentioned that briefly at the top of the show. It's now easier for you to clip out little snippets of stuff that you don't like. And uh, she brings that up. Um, and she also brings up that this, is, this, this was kind of quiet, but this is actually a big plus for creators that small snippets of audio, like 10 seconds or less, although there's no strict second rule, you know, a few seconds of audio is now ineligible to be claimed by a copyright holder. So uh, that was big. That was big. That was a huge nuisance. You know, people uh, making a video standing on the side of a street and a car goes by with music playing all the 100% of the revenue taken away from, from that creator because copyright. Well, now that nonsense is gone. So I, I was happy about that. Uh, she talks about YouTube Studio and how classic is going away. Remember, in January, bye bye Studio Classic is going away for most people in January. Well, that might be a little too harsh. They're going, they're going to start removing and when I say removing, they're going to take this away. Well, you can't see it. Hold on a second. That. <laughs> there you go. My little thing was covered. See, like way, way over. <laughs> Let me get my cursor big. There. Like right down here, that's going to go away. And did you notice this is all different now? Look, there used to be a flyout menu with all the little things that were classic, Studio Classic. It's gone now. You have a link direct to the audio library. Um, subtitles have, it has its own place. And playlists have its own. So this this got different. They took away that, that uh, grab bag folder of all the all the loose stuff and they've exploded it out. I was actually kind of freaking out because I had trouble figuring out where my um, live stream stuff was, but you can get to it through videos. It's a long story. Okay, what else is uh, Susan would just, if anyone has any questions, put it in the chat and do the at sign, all things YouTube, start typing at and then all things YouTube and then hit it when it shows up and I'll see it nice and yellow on my screen. 
Super chats, super chats and channel memberships. This is the next part that she hit. Um, this has put a lot of money into the pockets of channel owners. Uh, and she says, it's not uncommon for people to earn $400 per minute. Some very popular channels get on these live streams and it comes in $20, $20, $100, $100, $20, $20, $50, $50. $50. <laughs> you know, it's, it's insane. Um, and they also have super stickers. And did you see there was a Creator Insider video where they brought in the program manager or the team lead, the leader for our super stickers. And the guy was just on fire. I, I'm like, you got to put this guy on camera more. He was, uh, he was an Asian gentleman and he was just having so much. He was describing the different stickers because one looks like a little dancing pear. And he was just like the happiest. I was like, this is contagious. Like this guy is like amazing. Like he loves his job. Like you can tell he just loves his job. And it's an older gentleman. It was a lot of fun. Here, let me, let me show you. I'll get the video and put it in chat so you, you can watch it. So. Watch this. This guy. You see him there? <laughs> Look, he, he, he. Anyway, this, this he, like he looks all dry and stuffy. No, 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 no. He's he's on point. Okay, let's see. We have a chat uh, question here. Thank you, Brenda. Brenda G from Brenda G's Design. She's in my ear. Uh, Artful Years with Diana says, "Is it true the government could take over all of YouTube because Google don't want it anymore?" Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, no, the government wouldn't want YouTube. The government is a ill put together <laughs> group that has that doesn't want to run a business. They will not take over YouTube. I, I, I would bet my paycheck on it. My friend Dat and my friend Dave Gatton gave me an idea, says Mark Lindsay CNC. It's been working well for me, Artful Years with Diana. Like live streams at the end at the time they're live like live streams at the time they're live. I thought I thought Mark was gonna say he publishes a video, like a nine minute video, and then two hours later he goes live and has a Q Q and A about the content of his video. I thought that's what was was where you were going. Oh, and Corkboard TV says, don't forget the thumbs up. Thank you, Corkboard TV. Yes, this is a free way for you to support the show. It really helps. Appreciate those thumbs up. If you keep them shorter than 30 minutes, they'll get some viewership after they are processed as a regular video too. Oh, so Mark's saying don't make your live streams crazy long because people are more likely to watch them, I think is what you're saying. Cool. Good insight. How many things under government management are run like they should, says Jim Taco. Yeah, get me started. Get me started. So, um, yeah, super chats and channel memberships, and it's not listed here, but super stickers. Big, big win for, um, for uh, channel owners. Stories, she talks about stories. I'm not really too into stories, but whatever. Um, this, this is a hot take here. This I really like. She says, uh, we're also running experiments to help match content that would be considered edgy with advertising that fits their brand. As you know, yellow icons are a signal that only limited advertising can run on a particular video because of its content. We're working to identify advertisers who are interested in edgier content, like a marketer looking to promote an R-rated movie. So we can match them with creators whose content fit their ads. In the first month, this program resulted in hundreds of thousands of dollars in ads on yellow icon videos. You can learn more here. So, 
Think about that. You know, you get the yellow icon. You're still earning. First of all, yellow icons, you still get every single cent from YouTube premium viewers. That doesn't change. That doesn't go away. And, um, oh, Mark says, read it again. Let's see. I said, folks like live streams at the time they're live. LOL. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so, um, you know, who doesn't want to take the sting out of a yellow icon? Because, you know, it was getting kind of... It, isn't it kind of weird, the dynamic? Because they're like, the children, the children, don't be mean, don't say bad words, you know, families, families, families. And then they get slapped. You're being too kid-friendly or, you know, you're serving your ads on these kids. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, you can't be edgy. You can't have kids. What's left? Just boring stuff in the middle. So now they're saying, well, not, not that they're saying, they're, she's reiterating that... Uh, you know, they're trying to make edgier content work. What is the feature YouTube Stories asks Artful Yours with Diana. If you have enough subscribers, you can do a story similar to Instagram where your post exists and then after a certain amount of time it goes away. It's more like uh, in the moment type stuff, taken with cell phone type type of content rather than like meticulously slaved over edited video type content. Again, I don't I don't have stories, so I don't I don't play that. But I was happy to see the edgier edgier content stuff. Gaming. Gaming's next. Um you know, as YouTube is cracking down, we don't want anything nasty on our site cuz you know, we're we're, we're all pure over here. Um, YouTube is starting to get the hint that real-world violence and gaming violence are two separate things. <laughs> and they've recognized that. So they've... Uh... Oh, Portal Woodworks is here. Hi, Portal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm breaking down Susan Wojcicki's address to the community, her yearly, her year-end wrap-up. And look at this, look at this. Okay, you know, YouTube, she's been meeting with creators and she lists all of these creators she's she's met with. And look, Jacksepticeye and PewDiePie are on the list. Those are big YouTubers. Because last year, especially on YouTube Rewind, she got criticized. It was the most heavily downvoted video of all time on the platform because she was out of touch. She just you know, put all the commercial people in it and a uh, few YouTubers. PewDiePie, the, the biggest YouTuber at the time, wasn't even on it. So, uh, um, I don't know. I, I liked this list of people and that these two big, big YouTubers were on there because they seem to have been like, oh, we're not, we're not paying attention to you. Okay, yeah, be on the platform, but just, you know, I don't see you. <laughs> now she's... I, I don't know. I don't that I don't don't know if that made sense, but I, I liked it. She talks about self certification. Self certification is where um they've tested a way for uploaders to mark how their content fits in with the guidelines and self certify and blah blah blah. The more the more truthful you are over time on the number of videos that you self-certify. Now, this isn't a feature everyone has. Hardly anyone has it, but it's coming. Um, they've programmed the system that the more truthful you are in the past, the more the system will will not fight you in the future. You know, the, It'll trust you. The trust factor goes up. I thought that was a good way to engineer a system like that. And she talks about experiments. Some people freak out when there's ex experiments uh, going on every time you make a change, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, one of the experiments people really freaked out on is they wanted to improve the default thumbnail image. So if you don't upload a thumbnail image, 
You, you can you cannot upload your own thumbnail image, but if you don't do it, YouTube has to pick one screen of your, one frame of your video, and it wanted to do a better job picking which frame. So what did it do? It ran an experiment on only 5% of users or something like that, where your uploaded video was ignored and people freaked out and blah, blah, blah. Susan saying, well, you know, we should have communicated that better. And she talked about their methodology and ultimately how when they do experiments like that, when something changes on the system for a small number of people, one, that only happens after they do a mountain of research before that time, usually with several options, picking the best option. And then um, and she talks about how that's, that's good for the community. Um, people have been crying and crying about, uh, you can't take a break. You can't take a, when, when you take a break, you, when you, when you start uploading again, you're toast, all the momentum's gone. It hurts you financially. Well, they've analyzed a bunch of times when creators have done that. And they're saying, when you come back, you get just as many views, if not more views. And bottom line, people tune in to see you. And when you're back, they still want to see you. So... She was kind of countering that narrative a little bit with data that they said they have. Now, this is the living up to our responsibility. And this is where I kind of get worried because, you know, I've seen what they've done. They're like, don't be nasty. Don't be mean. You know, and then and then they're like, don't have any kid stuff. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, they reiterate that they want to, manage freedom of expression but protect people too those are the two big ones um because no one wants a system where you're not allowed to say what you want to say everyone has free speech at least in the usa most places don't have freedom of speech it outside of the united states um england doesn't have it europe a lot of the europe countries don't have it you cannot say whatever you want but you can in america um, so they want to, that's their big bugaboo. They want to balance protecting people from being hurt from the mean people and protecting people's freedom of expression. And, um, they redid their hate policy. So she talked about that, uh, and the work they did to, to make that policy, um, They, they updated the policy towards pranks and challenges because that was getting bothersome. You know, some people were really put through the ringer on those pranks, both physically and emotionally. And challenges, people get beat up and bloodied in challenges. They've, they've cleaned that up. And here's the new one that's coming. She talks about... Um, Well, this is talking about how they train the staff. I don't know how good they do that, but she's saying they train the staff to uh, catch the stuff and be consistent with what they catch. But what's coming is the creator-on-creator creator bullying. That's another policy that's in the works. And she's saying that's, that's going to come. Oh, here it is, harassment down here. Uh harassment guidelines. We're in the process of updating our harassment policy guidelines. So after that policy goes into effect, it's going to be very hard to say, I, as the creator of this channel, don't like that creator over there of that other channel, apparently. I don't know, but they're working on it. She talks one little paragraph about COPA. Um, Kind of just, <laughs> whoops, not, not, not sharing. One little policy, one little paragraph about COPA, one sentence about COPA she put in there. Um, well, and then she talks, about, well, I guess it's two paragraphs, that how, how all channels are going to have to mod, uh, mark their stuff made for kids. She puts some links. This, she, she really doesn't say much about COPA. This is huge. So Article 13 in the 
European Union, which turned into Article 17 after they modified it. This is huge. She says they've worked with the EU and they've modified the uh, liability protections that, that YouTube... Basically, she was saying that if YouTube makes a good faith effort to get copyrighted material identified on the platform, that Article 17 won't be able to sue YouTube. That was the whole bugaboo about Article 17 was that if your if a user of YouTube puts something illegal on YouTube, like copyrighted music, that YouTube was financially responsible for it. That doesn't fly in the United States, but the European Union said it does. And Susan said, meh, we've mitigated that now. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. And then she talks about Team Trees, Mark Rober and Mr. Beast's Team Trees initiative. She talks about that. They're on track to get They've partnered with it. Every dollar raised, YouTube is giving an additional dollar to that. Mr. Did you see Mr. Beast's video? <laughs> His latest video. They rented a building that was a bank, and they rebranded it Bank Banks. Everyone that came in just got free cash. They were giving away $700, $300, $2,000. Five, they gave one person $15,000 just cash. Just let people in and just gave them cash. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> I think they, they to in total gave away $100,000. It's crazy. I haven't, been, I haven't been keeping up on chat. What's happening in chat, Brenda? Okay, hold on a sec. Say again. Oh, Russ Clarity. Okay, hi, Russ. I see you slipped in there. Welcome to the show. Always good to have you here. Uh, it says, uh, sorry I'm late. My sciatica has me in a lot of pain. So I'm on pain, pain meds and I forgot. Hey, do what you got to do to feel better, my friend. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Jim Darko says Alphabet Inc. Alphabet is the new uh, name, the corporate entity name that owns Google. They restructured. Um, he says uh, Alphabet Inc. solved the EU issues by just buying it. <laughs> they don't have that much money. <laughs> Wait, Google owns the EU now, Jim? Question mark says Mark Lindsay CNC. <laughs> yeah. So. There was uh, Susan's address to the community. There is a video um, on her blog, well, on her, her YouTube channel. You can just do a search for Susan Wojcicki. So she has her own channel, 83,700 subscribers, or 80, yeah, 83.7 thousand subscribers and here's here's the video she, your but you don't have to watch it because i just told you ev everything in it yeah just the government says jim taco yeah bought and paid for but seriously though if fewer channels are going to get the good ad dollars because they're kids' programs, that means more ad dollars to spread around to non-children's channels like most of the people watching here. And every year there's more ad dollars pumped into the system, and that trend is going to continue. So maybe this whole COPA thing is going to uh, come around in the shape of more American greenback dollars, <laughs> more ad dollars. Corkboard TV says, have to run, Matt. Just stop by for support. Have a great night. Thank you, Corkboard TV. I support you right back. Do you want to mail me stuff? That's how you mail me stuff. If you have a sticker and you want to send it to me, you can send it to that address. I have stickers. If you want a sticker and you don't have a sticker, just ask me and I'll mail it to you. You don't have to give me anything. 
Yes, yes, yes. So what do you think? Are we gonna survive the FTC? I think so. They want to develop a huge waterfront property in Tor Toronto, have it all connected and retain the rights to all information going through it, plus most of the property tax. Don't know what Jim's talking about there. Mark Lindsay CNC says, uh, do you happen to know if advertisers can pick and choose the channels they spend their advertising dollars on? No, uh, but they can put in qualifiers that pushes their ads toward different groups of channels. Um, I think of it like Facebook. Have you ever bought an ad on Facebook? You could say, you know, I want these characteristics of my audience, of the audience to view my ad. It's, I think it's similar to, to that. But no, I don't think an advertiser can say, put all of my ads on this one channel. That's just, they didn't build it like that. Nor would they want to. Yeah, their systems uh, algorithmic me algorithmically uh, built oh alphabet wants to do the development cool I know yeah these big companies are always expanding into different different areas it's interesting yes 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 I was happy my one uh, video really blew up I showed the uh, I showed the statistics last time on that. I really had a good, good bang and bang and video. Some, some, something. Look at that. Can you see the difference? Twelve views, fifty-three views, forty-seven views, almost a thousand views. I know that's small, but holy cow! Yeah, I, I touched on something there. I tapped into it for sure. So that, that really blew up my analytics. Look, you can just see look at the big spike. Boink, look at that big old spike. <laughs> I like you that. Mark Lindsay CNC says, I could see a scenario where an advertiser wanted to buy ad time on just, for instance, the top 10 channels and YouTube sell that time at a premium price. Nah. I, I think that's uh, I think that's too difficult and not difficult in a technically challenging type of way. I mean, they they could write a Python script in a minute to do what you're asking. Um, I think the issue they're running into is by it being placed there, other things aren't being placed there, and then it's those other things that have to not be there, that could be the problem. It could pile up. Hey, now. <laughs> Dave says, good use of clickbait, Matt. No, no, no. I contest that. That's not clickbait. Everything's legit. You know, Copa, what happens if you click yes? Question mark. It's not good. That was the con. Oh, I'm not. That was the content of my video. And then the is the thumbnail misleading? Copa, I clicked yes. Dot dot dot. Now what? Exclamation mark. Question mark. I don't think that's. I, I didn't bait anyone. I I gave the user exactly what I said that they would. That they. Would, I know you're just kidding, but. Oh, Mark says, uh, I get what you're saying. Cool. <laughs> Jim Dockrell, all my videos are viral, meaning people treat them like a virus. <laughs> Thing about clickbait is it works, LOL. Just look at my last video. Well, I'm super impressed at your last video. He did a list, and he put big red letters what not to do. And I was just... 
you know, sometimes things are perfect and everything sort of falls into, like, Mark, Mark nailed it on his, one of his recent videos. I was really impressed. People love lists. People love lists. They're like, oh, well, what are those five things? I want to know those five things or five things not to do. I want to know five things not to do. I mean, it's just human nature. Just, yeah. <laughs> I know, Dave. Yep, just yanking your chain, piano man. <laughs> oh man, I tell you what, this piano stuff is getting hard. There was, I am. Um... <laughs> anyone wants to hear about my piano stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking lessons with an instructor, and I also do a, do a. Uh, online well not online but a, a iphone app ipad app and i was going through these lessons and everything was was super easy not super easy but everything got everything got more difficult at like a normal rate so like pop chords and essentials three and essentials one and essentials two and then intermediate one and intermediate it all was fine until i got to intermediate two and intermediate two was like 10 times more difficult. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> ah. My beaver went dark. <laughs> but um, I just thought that was funny. I barely got through intermediate two on my little training on my piano. I'm having fun. Mark says, yeah, I watched this guy's show on Mondays and I learned stuff in between one-liners in the chat. <laughs> Frankie CNC, to all of my to all of my videos are what not to do. Oh, come on. Come on, Frankie. You got some pretty wicked cool stuff over there. <laughs> oh man. Does everyone have their man crafting mug? You can get your uh, porcelain laser etched Yeti branded mug from Mr. Chad Grossclaws at mancraftingtm.com. Hashtag not sponsored. I say it because I like it. <laughs> Doing any chopping on Mozart yet, Matt? No, no, not Mozart. Although if if I go if I go far enough, fur Elise is, is a whole chapter. And this this is the one I really want. Look at this. Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> I hope I can play this song on my own by the time I go on a cruise. I'm going on a cruise in January twenty twenty one. So I have a year to learn that song. And uh, I hope I can I can play that song. I told my I told my piano instructor I was like, all right, you have fifty six weeks to get me playing Bohemian Rhapsody, and if you fail, I'm gonna quit. <laughs> I'm not gonna go back to you anymore. It's like you're, it's your mission. <laughs> all things YouTube. What? I'm not liking that comment. Doink. All right. There was a comment in the chat that I did not like. Yeah, Mozart. No, no, Mozart. I've done uh, Beethoven. Ludwig von Beethoven. I've done a few very <laughs> light touch. <laughs> All right, that's what I have for you this week, folks. You have to grow the mustache for Bohemian Rhapsody. I know, I know. I've got the fake one around here somewhere. Oh, oh I can't, I can't find it. it. It was right around this area, my fake mustache. Maybe I'll wear that in the piano bar. Yeah, this, uh, the cruise has a piano bar. And my, my plan is to sneak in there when no one's there and tickle the ivories. But we'll see.
All right, I think we'll leave it there. Hey, before we go, why don't you... Why don't you um, go to next week's next week's show? I put a link to the show page of next week's All Things YouTube, and uh, click the set reminder button. So yeah, right there. You do it's here. Hey, John, welcome, my friend. I'm just wrapping up the show. You do it's blowing up on the YouTube's. Let me tell you. And uh, sometimes if I can't answer a question in the uh, All Things YouTube group, you do it's right there. His name's John, and uh, he usually gets gets the answer if, if I'm not able to get to it quick because he's super smart. He goes to VidCon and some other uh, high-end conferences and learning around being successful on YouTube. So good stuff, good stuff. All right, we'll leave it there. If you're not subscribed to Brenda G from Brenda G's Designs, go ahead and do that. We're going to take a week off, so we'll see you in about two weeks on the... Tw uh, no, that's the wrong. Ignore the date, but that's Brenda G's channel. Click that. Have a great Thanksgiving if you're in the United States. <laughs> I was on a conference call with the corporate owners in England, and they were like... Uh, Oh, you have an American holiday coming up. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's where we got our uh, independence from England. I was like, awkward. <laughs> they were laughing. All right. Stay awesome, everyone. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for sharing the show. Drop a like if you haven't already. And I uh, will see you next week. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Hope you see uh, family and friends. And I hope you're thankful for the many blessings in your life. I know I am. I've been very lucky. All right. We will end it here. Thanks again. Take care, everyone. Oh, TFL Works is here. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it here. Take care, folks. Good night. Oh, got to hit one more button.